yeah, this is the greatest film of all time. Well, it might as well be. Katsuhiro Otomo's Akira was already a landmark manga being published in serialized form within Japan's Young magazine beginning in December 1982. At some point during the mid-1980s, during the publication of the manga, he was offered the opportunity for Akira to be adapted into an anime film. Agreeing on the terms that he received complete creative control of the project, which he was granted, the Akira manga went on a break throughout much of 1987 and 1988 as Otomo worked on what was, at that time, the most expensive anime film ever made. 1987's Royal Space Force The Wings of Honomes may have had a higher production budget overall than Akira. Akira had a production budget of 700 million yen compared to Wings having an 800 million yen budget all added up. Akira's overall budget of 1.1 billion yen is apparently considering an advertising budget as well. Certainly Wings couldn't have had too much of an advertising budget given its unfortunate commercial failure. Akira definitely looks as though it was the most expensive anime film ever made. If it didn't technically have the largest actual production budget in anime history, that is likely due to either extremely callous labour laws in Japan, at least related to animation, or dodgy practices in general regarding the treatment of staff. I think Disney's practices in the late 1930s and early 40s during their most impressive period artistically, and you can imagine why and how Akira is as extraordinary as it is. So what is Akira? What is it all about? On paper and in the manga, Akira is a grand saga about two young bikers in a dystopian Japanese metropolis and their encounters with a group of psychic subjects. One of the two, Tetsuo, has dormant psychokinetic abilities awakened in him and proceeds to punish the world for his insecurities. The other, Kaneda, takes it upon himself to save Tetsuo, ready to kill him if he has to. Now, as some may know, the Akira manga does differ significantly in a lot of ways to the film adaptation. Otomo chose to deliberately condense and rewrite the storyline for the sake of a two-hour feature. The manga's narrative takes place over the course of a few years, and rushing through all of its events for the sake of that limited runtime would be a calamity. Instead, the first two volumes of six are adapted into a re reworked narrative that builds to a violent, gooey conclusion similar to what was planned for the conclusion of the then unfinished, it has to be stated, manga. The manga itself wasn't finished publication until 1990, two years after the film's release, so I suspect Otomo adapted the manga's storyline visually, reworking the plot, cutting elements which could be trimmed or simplified, up to the point in the narrative wherein Tetsuo is attacked by the satellite Sol when trying to recover the remains of Akira. This takes place at the end of volume 2 of 6. And from there, Otomo seems to be experimenting with ideas he had for the end of volume 6, which may or may not have been inspired by conversing with Alejandro Hodorowski, according to one source. Now, that manga is a post-apocalyptic odyssey, one of the great epics of all time. Perhaps the most truly awe-inspiring speculative fiction slash genre saga to exist in the post-Star Wars demand for them. And its film adaptation is the greatest realization of animated motion ever executed and the finest visual display in the history of science fiction or speculative futurism. I mean, we all love what was accomplished in certain live action films and perhaps even some other animated features, although a few items can seriously compare with Otomo's triumphant masterpiece. Akira is so visceral. Everything in Akira is so powerful. Every frame has a level of detail which is awe-inspiring. I'll let it be known here, one day, if I ever realise my own epic, cerebral and highly violent animated saga, Akira will be the standard of detail and visual world building. But who could ever top the music? Maybe half of Akira's affect, whether we realise it or not, is the truly magnificent musical accompaniment. The score was composed and conducted by Sutomu Ohashi under his pseudonym Shoji Yamashiro and was performed and recorded by Gaino Yamashiro Gumi, one of the most fascinating musical collectives in the world, which Ohashi himself founded in 1974. One of their studio albums begins with a high-pitched woman's scream before some loud percussion. It, it terrifies my neighbours. Inspired by Indonesian gamelan music as well as traditional Japanese non-music, the soundtrack to Akira is truly the stuff of legend, a comparable sonic masterpiece in conjunction with the animated achievement it accompanies. 
if you want more familiar points of comparison musically, in case none of those inspirations meant anything to your ear's memory, Gamelan music is partially what inspired what we hear on King Crimson's 1981 album Discipline, and some of the end results in Akira's soundtrack at times have me thinking of that beautiful introduction piece to Crimson's Lark's Tongues in Aspic Part 1. Akira is one of the most formative films on me. I saw it at age 15 or 16, it may be or is approaching 10 years ago actually, and it blew my mind. I don't think I'd ever seen anything so fluid, so alive, so realised as dystopian or post-apocalyptic vision as Akira. Sure, there were older classics such as the very legendary and obviously really brilliant Blade Runner. I loved Gilliam's Brazil to the point of a blissful reverence, and had obviously seen films that had come out in my lifetime such as The Matrix and Children of Men, loving them also, and quite easily so. But nothing was so dynamic, so moving, so pulsing and real, and yet it was entirely animated. Because animation had given the genre a unique freedom which it did not necessarily attain when relying upon live-action photography. When someone asks you who delivered the greatest line in cinema history, you answer, Kaneda. You may reply, Kaneda? You, you respond, that's Mr. Kaneda to you, punk. I've included a ridiculous number of screen caps for this film because I just couldn't not, right? I decided to pause the screen caps and them just before the film's climactic moments just so I don't spoil absolutely everything for newcomers and because this has been over long as it is for as far as the screenshots go. I just sink back and let Akira wash in, you know, and you know what? I do get involved with its plot. I think it's a beautiful story about the relationship between Kaneda and Tetsuo, a deathly serious film about the dangers of accelerated human evolution, a fascinating series of character interactions in general, an abundant, bustling anthropogenic ecosystem, and one is always excited to see what will happen next. Years ago, I, 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 there was a point in 2012 where I called Akira my favourite film of all time. It's the same year I saw it. In a way, it's... it's I, I, want to, I feel like calling it my favourite film of all time. And that's, that's enough of a compliment, right? That's all you need.